and I'm gonna share the three people who have made the biggest impact on my life, who have been my mentors, exactly how I met them, and how that happened. So let's start here. We're gonna go old school here. My first mentor I met when I was about 13 years old. Now, a bit of a background here. When I was 12, I was really, really, really into saltwater fish, aquariums, reef tanks, like all of that sort of stuff. I was super into it. And when I was 12 years old, I joined a website. It's called reefcentral.com. Like, look it up. Like, it's a legitimate website. It's called reefcentral.com where people share their tips and their tricks about keeping reef tanks, saltwater aquariums, keeping coral, sea anemones. I mean, like everything is on reefcentral.com. And when I was 12 years old, my biggest passion in life was having a reef tank. I mean, I had always wanted to have a reef tank. And when I was 12 years old, I got myself a little reef tank and I was obsessed with it. So I would go on reefcentral.com and I was big into photography too at the time. And I would take pictures of my aquarium and I post them online. And through reefcentral.com, we'd also host these monthly meetups. And I, again, I kid you not, like I can't even make this shit up, but we would meet once a month and we would talk about our reef tanks and we'd share our tips and tricks and we would trade little pieces of coral and we'd sell fish and like, it was an amazing community behind it. And I was really big into like photography. So I'd, I'd take pictures of my aquarium, post them on reefcentral.com and meet all these people through the meetups. And I was just like really involved. And at the time, I thought like, you know what? I'm gonna be a marine biologist. Like this is my calling, this is my passion. I just loved saltwater aquariums as a kid. I, I mean, I still do. I'm still obsessed with saltwater aquariums. And through going to these meetups and posting online and all this sort of stuff, I met this guy named Chris. Now Chris owned one of the coolest websites that sold and imported and exported exotic fish and coral. And I looked up to his website. I loved his website. I looked up to him and all I wanted at the time was just to go to his warehouse and take pictures of his fish and coral. That was it. That was my only intention as like a 13 year old kid was just like, Chris, can I go up? Can I take pictures of your fish and coral? That would be the coolest thing in the world. And he agreed. And my mom, I remember she drove me to the warehouse and I was just like blown away. Like if you could imagine like a 13 year old who's really big into aquariums, like see a warehouse, like a full fucking warehouse full of like fish and coral and seahorses and starfish. I mean, I was just like blown away. So I took pictures of the fish and the coral and like, I, that's my, that was the only thing. That's all I wanted to do was just take pictures of the fish and coral. I had no intention of anything else. Like that was it. That was all I wanted to do. And if I was just able to do that, I'd, I'd be happy. I could, I could die that day and I'd be like, you know what? My life is complete. I'm done. Chris saw how passionate and how into the photography and the fish and the coral I was. And he went to me and my mom, who was with me at the time, and he said to me, if you'd be interested in working Tuesdays and Thursdays after school, I'd love to have you come in. You can help me out. You can take pictures of the fish and the coral. And in return for all of your help, I'll give you some free fish and some free coral. So I went to my mom and I'm like, mom, 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 please, please. like." please let me work after school Tuesdays and Thursdays. And like, please, like I'll do anything. I'll do my homework, I'll do my chores. Just like, let me know what I need to do and I will do it. And sure enough, my mom agreed. And Tuesdays and Thursdays would come around and I'd look forward to them so much because it meant I get to work and help him out at his store. It was through that that Chris became my first mentor. And I had no idea at the time that Chris would have the impact he did today. And I, and I honestly attribute a lot of the foundation that I have today with Chris. And let me explain why. Chris's store was one of the top stores in terms of not only the inventory that they had, but in terms of customer service. He had probably one of the best customer service of anyone in the industry. And his philosophy was this, is that you always need to give someone more than what they expect. For instance, if someone ordered $100 worth of items from him, he would make sure that they got $110 or $120 worth of value from that. So we always made sure the customer was surprised and gladly excited about their order. And they're like, wow, this is awesome. This is way better than what I expected. Those are the types of people that like to write reviews online. Those are the people that like to post about their experience. And it's just a win-win for everybody because the customer is happy. We get more exposure. They become repeat business. They, be, they give referral business and we just grow from that. So Chris taught me from a very early age to always give the customer more than what they expect and just to realize the importance of customer service. Now, when I was about 14, 14 and a half, 15, he started paying me and I'd start earning about $1 per picture that I took and I would Photoshop and put it on the website. So I became obsessed then with getting as many pictures as I could done, earning you know a good chunk of money when you're like 14, 15 years old, like that, it adds up. Through that, he would start letting me pick up phone calls and handle some of the customer service. And that was actually probably one of the biggest impacts for me is being able to talk to the customers one-on-one, -on -one, especially when I was like, 
14, 15 years old around there to be able to deal and interact with the customers. And if the customer was ever unhappy and like felt that their order wasn't worth it, we would make it right. No matter what it was, sometimes we'd give like full refunds. That was what he put me up to is just making sure the customer is happy and making sure that they're satisfied with the entire experience. And not only that, but just the inner workings of like the back office in terms of like emails and how important follow up is. And that's another thing too, is that we would follow up with every one of our orders. We would give them a call, make sure they got everything okay, make sure that everything arrived safely, that they were happy with their order, and we would just spend a few minutes with each customer just making sure they're happy. And I think you guys can understand my obsession with customer service, even the way I respond to all the comments. Even though you're not really a customer per se, you guys are the ones that are watching my videos, that are supporting my channel, that are commenting, that are liking, that are interacting with this, and my way of customer service is acknowledging those comments, responding back, because that's appreciation, that's building the channel, that's building what this community is that I'd like to have grow on YouTube. And that is my form of customer service and customer appreciation, is responding to all of your comments. And that is why customer service to me is so important. Now my next mentor I met when I was 18 and he became my real estate mentor. Now, I didn't expect to meet him. It just happened by chance. I didn't first think that like, if I wanna get in real estate, I need to find a mentor first and then I can go to real estate. I just went on my own path for it. So let me explain it. When I was about 18 years old, I would go to open houses and my only goal from going to those open houses was just to talk to the agent and ask them specific questions about the industry. I'd walk up to a random open house and I suggest all of you do this, by the way, if you're interested in getting into real estate, take my advice and do this because it worked really well for me. I would go up to a random open house and I just focused on the high end, by the way. I just focused on like, three, four, five million dollar houses and up. So I didn't waste my time with any of them. I just, I just wanted the high end. So I go into these open houses, not knowing anybody, as a completely random 18 year old. And I walk up when the agent wasn't busy and I'd introduce myself and say, hey, I'm Graham. I want to get into the real estate industry. I just wanted to pick your brain for a few minutes and ask you your thoughts on the industry, how it's changing since 2005, 2006. If you enjoy it, what are your recommendations for someone just starting out at 18? Is there anything I can learn from you that I can maybe implement in my own business? Any advice on where you would start if you were me? And that was my only objective, is maybe to get five or six minutes with an agent and pick their brain a little bit. And I did this for months, by the way. I did this for about two or three months. Every single Sunday from two to 5 p.m., I'd go, I'd go to these open houses and I'd meet a lot of agents. I would say pretty much all the agents gave me really mediocre bullshit advice. The most common advice I heard was, work hard, if you work hard and you, you stay smart, you'll be successful, so just work hard. And that's like the bullshit mediocre advice that doesn't help anybody. It's an easy cop out of just like work hard, you know, to just stay, f it's just, it's stupid. It's just really, really stupid. But not only that, I got a lot of agents discouraging me. And the next common thing I got was, you should go to college. You are too young to sell real estate. Nobody's gonna really trust you because you're 18, you don't have any experience, so it's gonna be hard for you. It's gonna be really difficult for you. And everyone was very discouraging. Now, when you're 18 years old, sometimes you have selective hearing and you're really, really, really stubborn. So when I heard that, I would just think in my mind, instead of like, oh shit, maybe they're right. I, in my mind, I thought like, it would just bounce off. It wouldn't even affect me. It would be like the words are here and then they just bounce off my brain. And like, it was as if I never even heard it because I thought that they're all wrong. I'm like, this is impossible. There's, there's no way that, that that would happen. So I didn't really take a lot of that too seriously. So I kept going, like I didn't get discouraged from that. And about two and a half, three months in, I walked into a random open house. I had no association with this open house. It was a random one in Bel Air. And I met this dude, his name is Van. And Van was so encouraging of me getting into the real estate industry. He was so supportive. And it was a slow open house that day. And I think we talked for about an hour. He was the first one from everybody I've talked to. I've maybe talked to like dozens and dozens of realtors. He was the only one that told me like, now is the best time to start real estate. You don't need a college degree. You're 18 years old. You don't have a wife. You don't have a mortgage. You don't have any expenses. You have no overhead. So if you don't do a deal for your first year, it really doesn't matter at all. And by the time you're 22 and all your friends are graduating college, you will already have had four years in the business and I guarantee that you're gonna be making at least six figures by that time. And not only that, you're gonna have no debt and you're gonna have four years of business experience under your belt and that's gonna put you way ahead from everyone else. And that made the biggest impact on me, that I could have four years of work experience, that there's zero downside and there's zero reason not to do it now. And we talked for about an hour. It was so impactful for me to hear all of this. 
And at the end of our conversation, he asked if I'd be willing to meet him in his office that week. And I was just like, mind blown. Like, oh my God. I, like, I literally came in there just expecting a five or six minute conversation. And now I'm gonna meet this dude in his office. That is like insane. So I'm like, okay, yes, when and where, and I'm there. And I met him a few days later. And when I met him, he basically offered me a proposal. He said, I'm really busy right now with sellers, but if you wanna come in and work as a buyer's agent, we'll split everything down the middle 50-50 for whatever business you bring in. And not only that, for any business you bring in, I'm gonna help you close the deal. I'm gonna kinda teach you what I know. We're gonna split things 50-50 for any business you bring in. And that to me is just like, I was like, done. This is it. And like, as an 18 year old, I thought I had made it in life. I thought like, you know what, this is it. This is my moment. This is gonna be life changing. And it honestly was. And it was because of him that I am here where I am today. To be completely honest, I'm not gonna bullshit you. And yes, even though I worked really hard, even though I worked smart, even though I found like a good niche doing Craigslist leases that led to a lot of business and sales, and even though I was like really into it, if it weren't for that guy, Van, I would not be here today. It's because of his teachings and because of his experience and because of his help that I am here making these videos for you guys. I, I did work really hard. I worked really long hours. I sacrificed a lot. I didn't have a social life for the first few years, but I could have done that regardless without him and I still would not be as successful as I am today. I mean, so let me get that out there. I'm gonna get that out in the air so it's, uh, so it's there. Learning from him made the biggest impact because this is a top agent in Los Angeles. Like, the top 1% of all Coldwell Banker agents internationally, like this is the guy. Learning from him cut my learning curve down dramatically. I think I learned more in the first year working for him than I could have five years working on my own. So for anybody watching, the takeaway of this mentor is that I highly recommend working with someone more experienced when you're starting real estate. And you don't need to start real estate with a mentor. I would recommend starting first as if you don't have a mentor, just go on your own path. And I think it just naturally happens over time. Now. My third mentor, his name is Jason, and he's the owner of the brokerage I work for right now. I met Jason about seven years ago at Coldwell Banker. Our offices were side by side when he first started, so I met him there. Shortly after joining Coldwell Banker, he ended up opening up his own brokerage, and he basically had a home office that he would work out of. And since he was a real estate broker, he did deals under his own name. So we kept in touch, but we didn't really communicate that often. About two and a half years ago, I did a random deal with him in the Hollywood Hills. It was a lease that I met off Craigslist. And I represented the tenant, he represented the landlord. When I did this deal with them, it was good to reconnect with them, it was good to catch up. And he explained to me that he's opening up his own real estate brokerage office. And it was across the street from where we met up. And he asked if I'd like to see it. And I'm like, dude, yes, that's epic. I would love to see it. Now, I had no intention of anything happening from this. I just thought we would do a deal. I thought it would be great to see him again and catch up. And that was be it. Now we went to the office that he was just opening up and I was blown away. I mean, it, it, it's a beautiful office and I'm here right now filming it. And Jason offered me a spot working with his real estate brokerage. And he made it in such a way that was just a better offer than where I was at Coldwell Banker. And I felt that it was a good opportunity for me to change things up and to grow. And not only that, but like I can earn more commission working with his brokerage than with Coldwell Banker. So I said, yes. Now I had no idea this was gonna happen. I had no idea that I would be here today. My intention was honestly to never leave Coldwell Banker. I was satisfied there, to be completely honest with you. I mean, even though I kind of plateaued in terms of my growth, I was satisfied there, I was happy there. I had no intention of anything happening from that. Things just naturally progressed. Now, Jason has transitioned from the owner of the brokerage I work with to a personal friend and a mentor who I look up to and I aspire to be a lot. Jason is like Van, except on steroids in terms of his productivity, his sales volume, and getting shit done really, really quickly and effectively. It's amazing to have that happen and have another person I can learn from in addition to Van and in addition to the impact Chris has had on me. A note about mentors is that it's, it's about blending everyone in to what works with your personality. For instance, if I said and did the things that Jason says and does, it wouldn't work for me. And if I said and did the things that Van says and does, exactly, word for word, if I did exactly what he's doing, wouldn't work for me. If I did the things that Chris said, wouldn't work for me, and here's why. It doesn't necessarily all fit my style, my personality. I think what's the most useful is that when you take different bits of people that you look up to and that you admire, and you incorporate that into yourself, it becomes who you are, deep down as a person. And it is relatable to you and you resonate with it and it, it be, just becomes part of your personality at that point. If you try to imitate somebody, it doesn't come off as being natural, it comes off as being fake. And that kind of turns people off. 
But when you're able to pick and choose things that you resonate with, that you like, that work for you, that's when you're able to develop as a person and grow from learning bits and pieces of everyone else and incorporate that into your own style. In the first scenario with Chris, I just wanted to take pictures of his fish and coral. I didn't even think of anything. With my second mentor, Van, I just wanted five or six minutes of his time to let me know his thoughts of the industry. Jason, I just did a deal with him and wanted to check out his real estate brokerage. I had no idea what would come from that. Again, it's less about going up to somebody asking, will you be my mentor? And more about just doing it regardless of whether you have a mentor or not. And chances are a mentor will come into your life naturally. It's less about asking for something and more about just doing it and having someone come in and see you naturally on their own accord and helping you out. I really hope this video helps. I really appreciate you watching and thank you so much for watching my videos. Thank you so much for everybody that subscribed. If you, if you haven't already, by the way, subscribe, like the video if you enjoy it, comment down below, let me know your thoughts. And if you haven't already, add me on Snapchat, add me on Instagram, I'm posting on Instagram now, so you don't wanna miss out on that. And until next time.